Hey there YouTube, um, just wanted to do an updated video uh, for the assistive touch feature um, on iOS 12 since that just came out uh, yesterday. Uh, came out on September 17th, 2018. So today is uh, the 18th. So uh, it, not much has changed as far as the assistive touch, uh, but I'll just go ahead and show you here. So you can see I'm in iOS 12 here. And what you'll do is uh, to get to the assistive touch, uh, you go to the accessibility options here. And in here you have a lot of uh, different options here. So you have um, things that will help if you're uh, somewhat vision impaired or if you wanted to um, do some things that might help you uh, see your phone better. Uh, you have the interaction, which is reachability, which is when you swipe down on the bottom edge, specifically on the iPhone X, um, you would swipe down and that would do reachability. So that lets you reach things that are um, higher up on the screen here. And uh, what you specifically came to see here is the assistive touch feature. So um, in here you can see it looks uh, pretty similar to how it did in iOS 11. Uh, not too much has changed here. And I, I customized a couple of these just to show you uh, how that works. So when you single tap, you have all these different actions that you can use uh, for when you single tap that button. And let me bring that button up here. So when you turn it on here, you'll have that small little circle that pops up and you can move it anywhere on the screen that is comfortable for you. And it, it will real, really move anywhere. So, um, well, on the sides and bottom and everything. So there you go. So you have a plenty of options of you know where you wanna put it there. Um, so, for instance, now I have it set to single tap uh, to open the menu for the assistive touch. So when I hit that, you'll see it pops up with all the options there. Okay. Now I have it double tap to do the app switcher, which is uh, traditionally how it was on older iPhones or iPhones with a home button. And that goes, that just looks like this. And basically you're just tapping it, not pushing down. And there you go. And double tap to go back. And like I said, these are customizable, which is wonderful. So um, if you wanted to, uh, let's see, what can we do here? Say you want to take a screenshot by double tapping. Here, I'll just go ahead and do it. Bam. Takes a screenshot. Now it's available for me to edit. It's great. So uh, then you also have long press, um, which will be different than 3D touch. So... Uh, now, one thing to note here is the new iPhone XR or XR does not have 3D touch, um, but it has something that is uh, somewhat like a long press. So I'm kind of curious how they'll handle the accessibility options in that phone specifically. But in the iPhone X, uh, XS and XS Max, um, this should be pretty much the norm here. So by 3D touching, like I said, you have all these different options that you can use here. And in this case, you can, in this case, I have it go home. So you just 3D touch and it goes home. All right. Um, now the long press is not pushing down, but you're just holding onto the button and that'll bring up your, um, I have it set to bring up my control center. So if I just hold down and there you go, you can see that. Now, one cool thing about the long press option is it actually gives you um, an option of, for the duration of that long press. So you can go in and you can adjust the time it takes to use the long press action. So that's that's pretty nice. Um, and again, you have all these different options here. So you've got, uh, you can open your menu, home, notifications, Siri, control center, lock screen, uh, volume up, volume down, mute, um, accessibility shortcut, shake, and you know, so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, and another thing this is helpful for is Say you have a broken lock button, um, and in the case of older iPhones uh, with home buttons, there were times when the home button would break and times when the lock button would break. So assistive touch has come in very handy for that. Um, it also comes in handy for, um, you know, if you're not able to physically press the buttons um, and you're able to touch the screen, um, it's nice to be able to do all of those things without having to grapple and try to press the buttons. So, um... Another thing you have here is your idle opacity, and uh, this basically just will let you see the button better and less. 
Now, when you take a screenshot and that kind of thing, it disappears from him while the screenshot is being taken. So you won't be able to see the little button when it takes the screenshot. So if you're wondering about that. Now, custom gestures is kind of cool here. So um, you can do a multi-touch multi gesture. So you can have something like that and then assign it to a specific, um, a specific action and save that. Now in the menu, uh, it looks pretty similar to how it has before. So you have your notification shade that comes up here. And then you have an option for control center. You have your home button there. So in the, you can also double press this. So if you didn't want to use those custom, those custom uh, button presses, you don't have to. You also have your Siri. Uh, you have device options, so you can lock your screen. You can rotate the screen, unmute it, uh, volume up, volume down. And what's nice is it doesn't bring up the HUD in front of it, so it brings it up in the center of the actual options there. And then you have more options here. So um, uh, in iOS 11, the SOS feature was introduced. So that's another thing. If, um, if your lock button is broken, that was one of the ways to access the SOS feature, which was uh, pressing five times on your lock button will call the, um, call the cops for you. It will call 911. So in this case, if you don't have a working lock button, you can go in here and you can press the SOS button and it will do the exact same thing there. So uh, you also have an Apple Pay option here, which is interesting. Let me get back there, decided to go away. So you've got an app switcher button there, you've got a screenshot button, you've got a shake option, Apple Pay, your uh, custom gestures uh, that I just showed you there, and you also have an option to restart the phone, which is pretty nice. So this is great if something is broken uh, as far as a physical button, it's great. Uh, and then you have more custom actions there. Uh, so that is about it there. Um, there are many other accessibility options in here which are great to use if you need them. So you have voiceover, um, you have zooming if you can't see the screen very well, um, you have uh, under display accommodations you can invert your colors here so it'll invert the colors here and uh, what's great about this feature is it actually will um, some apps if they know that it's being inverted uh, photo photos and videos will not be inverted but everything else will be so that's pretty fantastic you also have your auto brightness color filters and uh, reduce the white points so you can reduce the intensity of the bright colors you also have larger text so you can have large text and what this will do is it'll enlarge text in text messages and anything that um, is text-based so you can see it a little bit better all right um, another thing, and as you can see, it's still there, so let's see if it goes back to normal. No, it didn't go back to normal. All right, well, let's see. I'm just going to go back to, I believe it was right there. Okay. And then you also have bold text, which I don't know if it still does it, but before it would restart the phone. I'm not sure why it would have to do that. Um, you can reduce the transparency, and what that'll do is that'll take any, uh, any opacity out of, like, say, the control center right here. As you can see, around around the buttons and everything that's opaque or that's a that's got the opacity to it so if you reduce the transparency and turn that on you'll now see that it's completely it's it's just a gray color and uh reduce motion will be if you don't want to see any motion when you're going through apps or any of the animations so when you unlock your phone it has an animation when you open an app it has an animation when you close an app it has an animation when you go into your app switcher has an animation 